and record. What's going on everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing great. Thanks for tuning into this video. If you don't know me yet, my name is Hannes. I live in Italy and I make videos here on YouTube all about filmmaking and drone stuff. And today I would like to show you how you can bring your drone footage to the next level and make it look super cinematic fast. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get right into this now. The thing is, so while I'm making this video is recently, I really started to enjoy drone cinematography or drone footage more. And today I'm not talking about the FPV drone but I'm talking about a Mavic Air that I'm using and that's also what I would like to show you so as soon as I started to make more drone videos I also wanted to figure out how I can make them look the most cinematic that's why you are probably here I would like to show you how you can turn your DJI Mavic Air, Mavic Air 2 or other DJI drone footage into something cinematic. We're going to talk about a few different steps today and I'm going to run you through the process. One more thing before I start, I created as always, I mean I know that you're going to like this, I created a free cinematic drone editing pack that includes all the tools that we're going to use today. It includes a couple of free LUTs and some sound effects, some other editing tools. Feel free to download that below in my shop so you can follow along with the tools and yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. I don't know. That's literally what I need to do to make this video so that I can film myself doing this. Now we're here on my computer. I'm going to show how you can do this in Premiere Pro. But you can apply all these things that I talk about also in other editing software. But you know Premiere Pro is what most people edit on and it's what this tutorial is all about. I've already selected four clips here. And this clip is the loader clip that I shot in the mountains. A beautiful lighting situation, I already selected in the hour point to make this fast. But this is a 4K clip shot on a DJI Mavic Air in D-Cine-like, that's important. I talked about this I think in another video. You should always shoot in D-Cine-like with DJI drones to get the most dynamic range. And yeah, that's what we're calibrating with. So drone footage is always video only because the audio, the audio will be like... <laughs> so we're going to take this footage and drag it onto our timeline. This is now a 24 FPS timeline, 1080p, and I always edit in that settings. I never edit in 4K because that takes too much time and my computer can't handle it. So let's drag this on there, and as always, it asks us if we would like to keep the settings, and we always say keep settings because we want them. And what it's automatically going to do, because this footage is 4K, it's going to punch in, and the easy way to fix this is to go to effect controls, and then select the clip and then go to scale and type in 50% to have it scaled to the 1080p timeline. Check this out how it looks like. As you can see, cool drone clip, great location obviously and good camera movement also. I'm trying to move it always the drone. We're going to start with color grading. So I like to calibrate with LUTs and it makes it easy to calibrate but I don't want to be the guy that now uses one of his vintage LUTs and then you have to pay for it. As I've said before, you can download the LUTs for free. So how we are going to apply the LUT is we're going to go here. I already have the Lumetri color panel here and then to creative. I always apply it in creative and then go to look and then click on this and then say browse and we are just going to try out ocean even though it does not make a lot of sense. But yeah, okay, we're double clicking on it to apply it. And as you can see, it's very strong. That's always with LUTs. But then you have to adjust the intensity here. Intensity! Never know how to say this. But yeah, to get a little bit less of that because that's why aggressive now, just like an FPV drone. We're going to bring this down to 40. That looks okay if we check at the before and the after. It gave it some color. We have the teal and orange look now and I just really like the footage. One thing that I would still like to do, I think the highlights are first up a little overexposed so we go here to the basics and bring them down to get some details and then I would like to make them a little warmer and more orange so we go to creative and here we have the highlight tint and then you can click on here and drag this up a little bit towards the orange red side and that way you put some orange into the highlight because I want it to have a little bit of a golden hour look but this should not end up in a one hour long color grading video I can maybe do a separate video on that so let's just leave it there even though it's not perfect and the next thing that I would like to show you is camera movement. What I like to do with drone footage, I almost always shoot in 4K with drones. If you shoot in 4K and put it in a 1080p timeline, what you can do is you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can do fake camera movements and do slider movements and I don't know, I just really like to be creative with it. And what I've done is I have the effects here and I've created some presets that I use all the time and in the pack that you can download for free you will also find these presets 
and then I have video and here as you can see these are just my favorites I have zoom in and zoom out that I use a lot and so what we are doing now we are adding a zoom in to this motion so we are going to have this motion that we achieve by flying the drone in this direction and then we are also going to zoom in in the editing software because it's 4k we can easily do that I think we are going to get the interesting look with it and we are going to check it out now because that's what you're here for <laughs> let's use this this is the 4k version of it you're just going to take it and put it on your foot okay let's play this back now and check this out as you can see it looks super interesting we have this motion and then we have also the zoom in next up i'm going to show you a small tip or effect that can make a lot of difference that i sometimes use so sometimes i find especially in the darker hours of the day with drone footage so we already have some grain here and some noise because it's already darker and I find that DJI footage in general often looks way sharp and way noisy and it has this artificial look for me often so what I like to do if the clip seems to have a lot of this color noise and a lot of sharpness I like to put a denoiser on it and if I put this denoiser effect on it it first up gets rid of some of that ugly color grain and the second thing the footage is going to get a little bit smoother if you don't go too far with it that way i can also get rid of this over sharpened kind of look it's definitely also a little bit of a personal preference but i would suggest trying it out so i have also made a preset here so hg hannes engel denoiser so we are going to take that and put it on the footage and now in the effects panel this is going to pop up this is basically a VR denoise effect that I customized a little bit and usually I keep it around 0.04 or even 0.03 and yes that actually makes a difference I checked that if I turn this off and on now you can't really see a difference that way but if we zoom in to 400% so now it's turned off and this is the raw footage and now if we turn this on I think you can see that it gets rid of some of this ugly noise and that it makes it a little bit smoother. This doesn't make a huge difference, but it's something that I like doing and I find it makes especially DJI footage look a little bit better. Something that a lot of people like to do, I tend to not use it anymore, I used it a lot in the past, is when you have a 1080p timeline and you maybe upload a YouTube video, then you put on these ladder boxes and what it does, it basically gives it the cinematic look and I feel like it used to be popular and I pronounced used to be because I don't know, it doesn't seem to be that much of a thing anymore but I remember when I started with YouTube I always put on these ladder boxes for b-roll cinematic sequences and nowadays I just find it a little bit stupid I mean you get rid of beautiful footage that you could show otherwise but I would like to show you how you can do it anyway because I know that this is not the right way of doing it and I've learned over the years and I've showed it the wrong way and I'm going to show it the wrong way again now. The thing is if you actually want to have the cinematic cinema aspect ratio you will create a new sequence for that and put in the right aspect ratio already in the sequence settings but if you want to just get this letterbox in your YouTube videos in the as I've said in the cinematic b-roll parts of the videos what everyone used to do then this is how you do it so as you can imagine I also have a preset there letterbox and that's the effect so take that and put it on top of the footage and now you have the 2017 trendy youtube look and yeah it's up to you it definitely gives it a cinematic feeling but me personally i wouldn't use this in a 1080p timeline so i'm going to put it away now and work without that because as i've said it's not that much my thing anymore we're going to leave this clip as it is i really like it i think it looks cool moving on to the next one and seeing what we can do there that sounded so wrong. <laughs> the next clip is this, I already selected the in and out point. This clip is the intro of my last YouTube video. I don't know, recently I really enjoy flying through small objects and trying to crash my drone. So let's drag this onto our timeline. And this is also shot in 4K as you can see. So what we are going to do again is going to change the scale to 50%. And as always, I'm going to start with color grading. So we're going to go to Lumetric Color Creative and choose one of our Lots. and then we're going to choose look and browse and what I would like to try out here so I created this luck called golden hour and it should give it a fake golden hour look or enhance some orange tones into the highlight let's see what it does so double clicking on it as always it's way too strong so we're going to change the intensity to 25% here not too much and as you can see if we check out the before and after it gives a lot of as I've said, orange tones into the highlights. Something that I would like to do is get some blue tones or some cooler, colder, whatever you say, tones back in the shadows. 
To do that, same technique as before, we have here our shadow tint, then I'm going to drag it towards the teal and blue side. Play this back and see how it looks like. Okay, that was super close, but it was so funny, I almost crashed it. And let's see if we, you see the FX here for effect, and if we click on it, it turns our color grading off and on. And it didn't do a whole lot, it changed the tint of the clouds in the background there a little bit. As I've mentioned before here, this is not a color grading tutorial, and I have some other videos on color grading. With this clip, I would like to introduce another topic, which is sound effects and sound design. Something that I feel like is very important, especially with drone clips, because drone clips, obviously, as I've said before, they don't have any sound. And that's why you, as a filmmaker, or whatever you do, video creator, need to make sure that there is still sound that makes it interesting and that gives you the feeling of being right there. That's what I think is important to learn with drone cinematography, unless you are just making silent videos which is also possible, you know. I'm just going to show you a technique that I use a lot lately. If we check out this clip here, I'm well close to this. I don't know how to say this in English now. You know, this fence here, I have no idea how you say to that. And I almost crashed into it. And what I would like to do is give the viewer the feeling with the sound effect of flying over this. And you maybe saw or actually hear that in my last YouTube video, that I used this whoosh sound effect and this transition sound effect to give it that feeling. Okay, I forgot to import them before, I had to quickly import them now. And now we have them here and my transition sound effects that you can also find in the pack. And I'm going to use this one quick. I'm not very creative with these names, but this one is the one that I use most. And let's check this out. As you can see, this is just a very quick swoosh. And we're going to use it here. We're going to drag it and put it under our clip. And then we need to position it so as I fly over this fence or whatever you call it, this sound effect needs to be applied or needs to happen. Okay, let's check this out. I think I did not position it right yet. Now it's hard to tell how loud it should be because we don't have the music yet. And then once we have the music, you need to adjust it so that it isn't distracting and you need to play around a little bit. It's not that easy in the beginning. You need to find a spot where it isn't distracting the viewer and where the viewer isn't like, hey, what was that? But still it needs to be a subtle shoo. Just so that you understand what I mean, I'm going to show you the final clip here with music. And as you can see, it's very subtle, but it makes an impact definitely. I would say typically you use the sound effects when you're flying close to a subject or you're flying through something. And yeah, that's when you use them. This is our last clip. I already selected the in and the out point. Okay, we have our clip now here. I think this is a super cool clip. It's a little contrast, even though I shot it in the flat picture profile. And we're going to try to color grade it now first by going again to creative. I'm going to look, browse, and I'm going to use ocean here again. And right away, it's definitely way too strong. We're going to bring it down a little bit to something like 20, 30, I would say. And then we're going to check it out. It's fading the blacks a little bit here in the foreground, which I like. Play this now. I still think it's a little too contrasty, so I'm just, usually you don't do this, but I'm just going to bring down the contrast and bring down the highlights also here so that we don't have that punchy and strong colors and punchy contrast. Here I would like to show you quickly something totally different again, but I think it fits perfectly. So I shot this clip in 60 FPS with the intention of being able to slow it down in post, which means I shot it in a higher frame rate so that I can then bring it down to 24 frames per second and get a 60% or 40% actually slow-mo. And what I would like to do is make the first part of the video till here where I fly through this hole slower so that we can see it more detailed. And then once we are through the hole, I would like to speed it up and make this faster. The right way that you're going to do this is by using speed ramps. And I've actually, as you can imagine, made a video on that in the past. That's also here. And in the video I explain why detailed how to use speed ramps. But now I'm quickly going to show you how you can do it. So if you have a clip that shot in 60 FPS, for example, you can now set a point at which the speed ramp should happen. And for us, as I've mentioned, it's after we fly or when we flew through the hole and then we would like to speed it up. How you're going to do this, it's not that hard actually. You go here to the little FX, then right click on that and then choose the option time remapping and say speed. The first thing that you need to do here is make a keyframe. To do that, press command on your Mac keyboard and then go to the point that we have selected where we would like to change the speed. 
and then click on there and it's going to make this keyframe. You're going to take the left part of the keyframe or the right part and drag it to the right side and the left part to the left side so that you create a ramp. Afterwards you will see why. This is the first part of our clip. What we're going to do is click on the line and bring it all the way to 40%. As we've said, we want to make it slower. So we go maybe with 50, 40 is maybe a little too slow, but 50 is half speed, that's perfect. And now let's check this out. As you can see, it goes slowly through the hole and then it speeds it up. But now it speeds it up to 100% and I would like to have it at 200 to make a fast motion afterwards. And to do that, click on this part of the line and then drag that up to 200 and then we have it double the speed. Lift this here and let's check out how it looks now. As you can see we have it in slow motion when it goes through the hole and once it's through the hole it speeds up. We have one more problem now, this is now a speed ramp but there are two different forms of speed ramps. So this speed ramp now as you can see the little line is linear so it goes up linear. We would like to have a curve form. And how we're going to do that is click on one of these keystones here, then it turns blue and then you see this little thing here. You're going to take one of the two small points and then you can move that. As you can see, as you move it, it makes the linear line more like a curve and it is effective and it makes it smooth for the speed ramp. So let's check out our whole clip again. Let's see, we have slow motion through the hole and then we're through the hole and it goes double the speed. That is actually a super cool clip and that is how you use speed ramps to make my drone footage look more interesting and more cinematic. And that was it, there are some other things that help you to get a more cinematic look but these are the basics that I use on a daily basis also for my YouTube videos to get the look that I want to get. I know this video is way long because it's just impossible to show all of this in 10 minutes and I also talk way too much. Anyway, that's how I do it. I hope you could follow along and I hope you found it interesting. I'm now pretty exhausted after talking for an hour and trying to show how to do this. And I'm going to go outside and, I don't know, skate in my garage or do something. And I'm trying to do some more vlogs again and go outside and do some more stuff outside with my camera and bring you along and not always just in this room because I'm sick of filming in here. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope it could help you out. If you have any more questions about drone cinematography or editing, you can just leave a comment below and I'm going to answer it or even make a video about it. That being said, I hope I'm going to see you in the next one. Please subscribe below if you haven't subscribed. That would mean a lot to me and goodbye. Tschüss.